Hi friends, I'm Sarah. Welcome back to my channel, Sunset Bow Tarot. So today I wanted to do a walkthrough of a deck that's quite new to me. I just got it within the last week, and that is the Solara Occulto Tarot, or Tarot of the Hidden Sun is what that means, and this is a deck by Amanda Spicer. And this is a deck that I initially saw it on uh, Dawn Michelle from Boho Tarot's channel. Um, she has the first edition of this deck and she has modified it. I have the second edition. But the imagery of this deck from the moment I saw it, this deck just haunted me. I loved the imagery. I loved the color palette. I loved how quirky it is. It's just a really unique deck in terms of its illustration style. And I just had to have it. At the time that I first saw it on Don Michelle's uh, channel, which was within the last maybe month or two months, um, it was sold out. It wasn't available, but um, some did come available for sale. Uh, and so I snapped one up and it got shipped from Canada and I'm so excited to have received it. So I just wanted to do a quick walkthrough and kind of show off the deck and all the packaging because I actually, when I was doing some research on this deck, I wasn't able to find a there, I found a couple of videos on the second edition, but I didn't find one that showed the book, the full packaging, and everything that came with the second edition so that, you know, you could really see if there were any differences between the first edition and the second edition. So I decided that I would go ahead and do a walkthrough of this one. So it comes in a really nice box. Um, it says Solar Occulto Tarot second edition. It does have some um, gold foil on the box and it has this cool design here. It is an 80 card deck. There are two additional major arcana cards in this deck. Um, and then it's a, one of those magnetic boxes. So I'll just open it from the side here. And inside um, there is a ribbon to pull out the guidebook. So this is what the guidebook looks like. We're gonna take a look at that later. And then there is also, you can use the ribbon to pull the deck out. And the deck does come in its own separate uh, tuck box inside the large box. So um, I, however, destroy tuck boxes, so I'm sure I will be looking for uh, a bag to keep this deck in. But um, it is a quite a nice uh, tuck box. It is a matte finish tuck box, and it's second edition, 2020, 80 card deck, Solar Occulto Tarot. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the cards out. Oops, left one behind there. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I thought I would zoom in and we could flip through the deck and take a look at the illustrations and these quirky little characters that appear in this deck because I was just obsessed with it from the moment I saw it. I loved the illustration style and I loved this kind of neutral um, rust and ochre kind of color palette. So I just think it's awesome. Um, so let me go ahead and zoom in. So as you can see, the second edition is a little bit um, different from the first edition. My understanding of the first edition is that it had um, darker colored edges and it didn't have these gold foil frames um, on the cards. And then I think the font and the layout of the bottom was a little bit different too. Um, it is relatively glossy. Um, not crazy glossy by any means, but it does have a little bit of a gloss to it. But it is this really pretty sort of light pinkish clay colored um, border and then with the gold foil and then inside uh, the image. And I think the first edition also had gold gilding on the edges. Um, this edition does not have the gold gilding on the edges. It just has the foil on the front, which I actually am fine with. Um, you know, I don't mind gilding, but it also isn't one of those things that really wows me or makes me excited about a deck for the most part. So, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's, it kind of a nice bonus, but it's not that big of a deal. This is what the backs look like. I don't love the fact that there is some print on the back. It just is really obtrusive, I feel like, and it makes the back asymmetrical, um, but it has this concentric circle design on the back. Um, these cards are a bit bigger than a standard tarot deck, so just to compare it to a standard Rider Waite Smith, um, uh, US Games Rider Waite Smith card, um, you can see that it is. Uh, quite a bit wider and also a bit taller than a standard uh, size tarot card. So it is a little bit bigger of a deck, but from my standpoint, I don't feel like 
I will necessarily have too much trouble handling this one. The cardstock is quite flexible, so it feels like it'll probably um, riffle shuffle just fine. So um, I don't see myself uh, trimming off the borders on this or anything, but um, you know, you never know what I might decide later on in the future. So let's go ahead and start flipping through these cards. It, you can see the art style is really unique. Again, this color palette is all very, very neutral colors and all of the creatures are, the people and creatures are sort of weird. You know, they're, it's, it's, it's a quirky deck. It has this really wonderful, unique feel to it. It actually, if I had to compare it to anything, I would say that this deck feels kind of like a cross between the Little Monsters Tarot and the Efflorescent Tarot. I think what it reminds me of more than anything is uh, Peony Coin Archer's art style, which I love, obviously. Um, I think, you know, probably most of you know how I feel about those decks. Um, I absolutely adore them. So I think this that's part of the reason why this appealed to me so much. I just loved these quirky little characters and the, the sort of you know, intricately drawn, but also kind of, um, kind of funky and off kilter look of the cards. So, um, we start out with the fool and the magician. And I really just, I think the imagery of this is so interesting. You have people with animal heads or animal bodies and different combinations and these different characters. Here's the high priestess, but it also has, you know, a lot of very traditional imagery. I mean, in high priestess, we've got pillars, we've got pomegranates, um, we've got the moon, you know, it's, it, it, we've got a snake here, which I think is really awesome, um, coming out from behind the veil. I think it's just a really, really wonderful take on a lot of the imagery. Like the empress here, you can see she has antlers. There is this really um, quirky sort of part human, part animal feel to all of the imagery. Um, I like how the emperor is holding the world in the palm of his hand, um, but we still have the Aries symbology. Here's the Hierophant. And you can, you can see he has vaguely animal face to him with these weird little alien supplicants, but we still have the crossed keys and the traditional hand positioning. It, a lot of it is very traditional. Here is the Lovers. A little bit more of a Marseille style lovers with the one guy and two women. And here's the chariot. There are quite a few of these kind of fish-like characters in the deck and I kind of I love them. They remind me of the movie The Shape of Water. Um, these sort of humanoid fish creatures. Um, I actually loved that movie uh, <laughs> even though it was really weird. Um, so I really enjoy this kind of take on it and the chariot is the card for cancer so um, it you know the fact that there's some water uh, associated here is astrologically um, quite appropriate. Here is strength and I do love in this one how you know it, it does depict that there's two sides of this same creature you know there's a snake tail and then there's a lion head and it really gets at some uh, a lot of meanings behind strength. Here's the Hermit and the Wheel of Fortune. You know, definitely some tra traditional symbology, but um, I just love this art style. Here is Justice. I really like this card. And the Hanged Man. And Death. Temperance and the devil with the tower and the star. I do find it interesting that it's a lactating centaur in the star, but to again, it's just it's quirky, totally fine with me. I really like this moon card. I just, it, it, it's a very traditional moon card, but I love the illustration style of it. And here is the sun. And again, we do have the baby on the horse, but it's almost like a little homunculus um, baby on the horse. And there's this weird long armed woman. I just, I, I, the quirkiness of this deck just really appeals to me. It makes me smile. I'm so excited to use this one. Here's judgment and the world. And then again, we have two additional uh, cards in this deck. There's Prudence, 
which is a, a very cool card. It looks like there's, you know, two faces to this person, but she's only seeing one of them. Um, there's this little dragon down here and a snake. So it's, it's interesting. I'm, I'm interested to see what her takes are on um, the meanings of these additional cards. Um, and then here's Hope, which is the other extra major arcana card. And this one I think is pretty self-explanatory. There's, um, you know, person with butterflies. Um, and then we go into the wands. So here's the ace and the two and the three. So a lot of this is very traditional imagery, but just with that odd little edge to it, the four, like, I like these little fighting creatures <laughs> in the five of wands and it really works for the card. You know, it really works that, you know, there's, it's a little bit of a beast element <laughs> to the five of wands. Here's the six of wands and the seven. I think it's so interesting how he's only wearing one boot in the seven. And the eight. The nine. And the ten. A little weird little fawn kind of creature in the ten. And then here's the quartz. We've got the page. The knight. The queen. And the king. Going into the cups, here we have the Ace of Cups and the Two. I just I really love also how all these figures have their hair flying up in the air. I don't know. It just the, there's a lot of life to these illustrations. They they are really draw you in. I feel I just I'm really enjoying the art style. Here's the Four and the Five and the Six. I like that six a lot. The seven. The eight. The nine. And the ten. And then the cups cords are where you kind of see the, you can tell, I mean, they look just like the creature in um, The Shape of Water. <laughs> Here's the knight of cups. The queen, I like how she has an octopus on her head. And the king. So going into the swords, here we have the ace of swords, the two, three, the four, the five. <laughs> I really, I just, I love these creatures. The six, I enjoy this one too, how... There are these creatures in the water trying to hold the boat back. The seven. The eight. The nine. And the ten. And then here we have our page. And our knight. There's lots of wings um, in the sword suit and the in the uh, the courts, here's the queen. She has beautiful butterfly wings, and the king. And then finally the pentacle. So here we have the ace, the two, the three, the four. I just I love these little half human, half animal creatures. The five, the six. The seven, the eight, the nine, and the ten. And then we've got the page, the knight, the queen, and the king. So that's the deck. Um, and like I said, I, I just really, really love the imagery of this deck, I think it's really kind of wonderful. I, I, it, again, it was just one of those decks where I saw it and the imagery of it just struck me so much. It just kind of haunted me until I could get a copy of it. It just kind of catapulted to the top of my wish list, and get, I'm so excited I was able to get a copy. So I'm just going to shuffle a little bit. It shuffles beautifully. 
no issues with the shuffle whatsoever. Um, you know, the cards are not super thick, um, but they're, you know, they're, um, they're a good weight of cardstock, I feel. They feel like a durable weight of cardstock and, um, you know, they're not crazy thick and impossible to shuffle, um, but they, they are, they don't feel super thin and flimsy either. So, um, it's a, they're a very nice weight of cardstock. So yeah, it's a lovely shuffle. I'm just gonna draw a couple cards here and we'll just see. Oh, you guys, it's the Knight of Cups. <laughs> it's my card. It's my stalker card that tells me when something special is happening. And yes, I do really, really love this deck. We have the Three of Pentacles and we have Temperance. And God, I gotta say, that's a really beautiful first draw from a new deck. Um, that delights me. So. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. So anyway, um, again, this is the Solara Occulto Terra. I am going to take a quick look at the book here just to sort of go through what's in it. We're not going to go through anything in too great of detail. Um, there, it's, it's, it's a pretty nice book. It's glossy pages. Um, you know, it is like pretty nicely bound. Um, there aren't uh, color illustrations, but um, there are a little discussion of spreads, just a Celtic cross. And then it looks like each card gets a page with some discussion and then upright and reverse meanings. So um, I'm gonna take a look, Those, that's the majors. It looks like the minors have pretty much the exact same amount of information for each of the minors. I am curious to see um, Prudence. Um, so this is interesting. Um, it talks about how in, with prudence, you're looking into both the past and the future of your life. And it, it's an awakening into seeing the multidimensional self. Um, it indicates that you're making your decisions based on deep wisdom. Um, looking at the high priestess and the reflection of, oh, so this is intended to be the high priestess. And the reflection of the mirror shows that you're willing to dive into your deep subconscious and make deep decisions from there. So that's very cool. Um, I, I, I like it. And then there's hope. So, um, yeah, I think this is, you know, a really nicely done book. Again, you know, it's not giving you a ton of information, but um, it's giving you a little bit of uh, the author's thoughts on the different cards. So I think that's quite nice. And there isn't, oops, it's like my page is miscut a little bit. I'll take a scissor to it and fix that. Um, but yeah, it doesn't look like there's much more to it than that. It's mostly just, you know, sp information about the cards. There's, there's not a lot more, but you know, again, it's a, it, it has a lot of traditional imagery in it. So I don't think that you need much more, um, from a book. So again, that is the Solara Occulto Tarot. And, um, I am just really in love with this deck. I think it's absolutely wonderful and quirky and delightful and weird in its imagery and it I love the color palette I love the artwork and it's just one of those that struck me so hard when I first saw it and I just I knew I had to have it so I'm thrilled that I have it and I'm really looking forward to working with it anyway thanks so much for following along with me while we took a look at this deck and have a great one bye-bye